was in Dili just about two weeks after that and the Indonesians formed a new death squad called the Ninja and goes around at night and takes suspects away never to be seen again. In the morning, Thursday morning, my cousin came and screamed and said uh, last night the army came in and smashed all my uncle and my cousins. And then after knowing she came, they all got black nose and all broken. And when I see them, I was feeling sad, so I can't do nothing. Those acts of repression have intensified, and there have been house-to-house -house searches, curfews, areas of Dili itself, the showcase of East Timor from, on the Indonesian's part has been shut off and curfew. We have the street to go, you can see them with the trucks and car and motorbike. So when we went out, you can see nobody walking, nothing, just empty. Everybody's scared. I submit that it is high time that the question of East Timor was voted off the United Nations agenda, that it ceased to preoccupy and distract the nations of Southeast Asia and the Pacific. We uh, expressed regret, and it was expressed firmly before, and I repeated that, that there hadn't been the uh, internationally supervised act of uh, self-expression of the people of the area. Now, uh, that is in the past, past. The United States applauds Indonesia's quest for what you call national resilience. No nation in our era has shown itself more firmly committed to preserving its own independence than Indonesia. And yet no nation has pursued that goal in a more responsible manner. Streams flowing together become rivers. Rivers increase whatever opposes them. So must the children of Timor unite, unite against the wind blowing from the sea. The sea wind weeps the kabala, weeps our eyes bloody, our pegs bloody, weeps our tears roll down, our sweat roll down, sucks the fate of our earth, the fate of our bodies. Streams flowing together become rivers, Children of Timur United reclaim our land. Hafin Hafin to hus to me Australia. Ye how sai hu sinaba. How hal declaration militar haru ka halo kare declaration. Ho how ni family hu tut ni nar how ni line ni family ni nar hi how ni family ni ve ke ye ye Timur ni ni nar par mai hene la bel kolia. Se how mai hene how kolia kare sir hena ba bel hetan susar. I balu ne beke ne sam. Ane si ihal lista negra si rebel bolu bahal turtura so halo bot tut conforme si me hakara. Ne em halo koi hanu iat sai. Uiat sai ihal ihal televizam. Muitas vezes matavam mulheres, crianças, levavam sempre a cabeça até amarravam assim as cordas para as orelhas, penduravam assim o pescoço e levavam as cabeças dos mortos, né, para apresentar o comando. E depois nós andamos com eles, andamos por aí fora. Eles apanhavam raparigas raparigas novas coisas obrigavam eles, hein? levavam com eles para coisas, prendiam ela, disse que é fritilim, fritilim. Morto, me dado mesmo, sai na minha cara e levo, levo mais timor, lorei de tis lolo, fuan, horran, na facar e timor, lá sai. Timor, a cara, tim, continua timor.
East Timor, just 650 kilometres to the north of Australia, was colonised by the Portuguese in the late 16th century. The decolonisation of East Timor only began when the right-wing government of Portugal was overthrown in 1974. However, the move to an independent East Timor was short-lived. On the 7th of December 1975, East Timor was invaded by Indonesia. After the invasion of East Timor in 1975, the island becomes like a hell. We can't no longer live there. And the island becomes like a great prison for our people. We lose the freedom. We can't leave our own way of living. Within three months of the invasion, 60,000 East Timorese were dead, and by 1985, up to 200,000 people, one third of the population, had died because of war and starvation. Under its first leader, President Sukarno, Indonesia had been seen by many Asian and African countries as the champion of anti-colonialism, having ousted their Dutch colonial rulers in 1945. But since the 1965 anti-communist coup that brought President Suharto to power, Indonesia has adopted a more pro-Western and expansionist role. In 1976, Indonesia claimed East Timor as its 27th province. Yet despite the active support of the United States and Australia, the United Nations has never recognised this claim. We have helped uh, the East Timorese to be independent through integration with Indonesia because they would not be slaves to a colonial or other master. Secondly, because uh, these Fritillin elements, they are communist influenced and we cut out a growth or a certain growth of communists in our backyard. In the short period before the invasion, three main political parties emerged. Apadeti, a minority party, fully supported integration with Indonesia. UDT, the Timor Democratic Union, was a conservative and nationalist party. The party which quickly established itself as the most popular was Fretilin, the pro-independence party. <laughs> Following Portuguese supervised village elections, in which Fretilin won a clear majority, UDT launched an unsuccessful coup against Fretilin on August the 11th, 1975. During the coup, the Portuguese administration withdrew from the mainland of East Timor. Fretilin then established de facto administration throughout the country. Threatened by a possible independent East Timor, the Indonesian generals stepped up their plans for an invasion. Under the code name Operation Komodo, military incursions were launched from Indonesian West Timor. There's been no attack today, but the 60-man Fretilin garrison is pulling back to Maliana. They've been told that Indonesian soldiers are heading this way up Greg the Shackleton, an Australian television Enemy reporter, like was one of the international journalists who went to East Timor to cover the conflict. Why, they ask, are the Indonesians invading us? Why, they ask, if the Indonesians believe that Fretilin is communist, do they not send a delegation to Dili to find out? Why, they ask, are the Australians not helping us? When the Japanese invaded, they did help us. Why, they ask, are the Portuguese not helping us? We're still a Portuguese colony. Who, they ask, will pay for the terrible damage to our homes? My main answer was that Australia would not send forces here. That's impossible. However, I said we could ask that Australia raise this fighting at the United Nations. That was possible. At that, the second in charge rose to his feet, exclaimed, Camarada journalist, shook my hand, the rest shook my hand, and we were applauded because we are Australians. That's all they want, for the United Nations to care about what is happening here. The emotion here last night was so strong that we, all three of us, felt we should be able to reach out into the warm night air and touch it. Greg Shackleton at an unnamed village which we'll remember forever in Portuguese Timor. The government has never acknowledged that they were killed. 
Uh, because if they did acknowledge that, the next question would be, what were the circumstances, who did it, how? And it would have been the easiest thing in the world for the Australian government to insist upon an inquiry, but of course they never have. The Whitlam government did not protest the murders of the newsmen. It was later reported that within 24 hours of their deaths, senior ministers in the Whitlam government were informed by one of their intelligence services that the men had been killed. Earlier, in September 1974, Whitlam had indicated to Indonesia's President Suharto his preference for the integration of East Timor into Indonesia. One month after the Balabo tragedy, Indonesian authorities handed over Greg Shackleton's passport and a small box containing unidentified charred bone fragments. Faced with the certainty of invasion, Fretilin declared the Democratic Republic of East Timor on the 28th of November 1975. Ten days later, Indonesia invaded East Timor. On that morning, an urgent appeal was broadcast by Fretilin from Dili Hospital. The appeal was heard on the Red Cross radio in Darwin. A lot of people are being killed, I repeat, indiscriminately. de dezembro nem Raul de Dili. Momento nem Fretilin controla roto, controla vila Roailar Antoma, desde fronteira to tutuala to Rai Timor Lorosai. Mola da der san dia 7, 4 horas, Indonésia invade Dili, ho ho avião hatum para que dista. Começa a tiro malo ho itania Timor Ansira, itania camarada Sira, itanim camarada Sira mos resiste teb tebes. On Christmas Day, just 18 days after the initial invasion, 20,000 Indonesian troops launched an attack into the hills around Dili. Fretilin and the greater part of the population withdrew to the mountainous interior. Indonesia começou a avançar e nós começamos a recuar, fomos recuando até Mobisi. Mobisi já não coisa, chegamos a recuamos Mobisi mais para cima para até Flecha e quando o, o chefe, os comandantes da Fretilin resolveram uh, dividir-nos e mandar cada um para as suas terras para começar a fazer guerrilhas, porque nós, força contra força, nós não tínhamos força suficiente, mas para guerrilhas podíamos demorar muitos anos a lutar, né? Para que ela ia dar lá, e já vai nem se ir a cair, se ir a ralo massacre, se ir a ir, se ir a cair, se ir a ir, 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 During this period, 1976 to 1978, Indonesia more than doubled its spending on military equipment. The major supplier was the United States. Following their defeat in South Vietnam, the US government was more than ready to support the vehement anti-communism of the Indonesian generals. The Carter administration, while professing a commitment to human rights, increased its military aid to Indonesia to $93 million. In 1978, the Indonesian military used new anti-guerrilla tactics of encirclement, starvation and annihilation in the mountainous interior where over 90% of the population lived. Fizeram aquele cerco, apertaram a pouco e pouco e conseguiram apanhar-nos. E quando nos apanharam, eu estava no meio, eu e o camarada Guzmão, estávamos no meio 
com a família também, a família do camarada Lobato, no meio da, da, de muita população. Então, ali é que foi mais massacres. Todos aqueles que levaram armas pesadas foram todos apanhados, foram rasgados, alguns foram martirizados, pisados a ter de dar sangue. Ou as crianças, até crianças, a morrer agarrado às mães. O meu também morreu de fome comigo durante dois dias, abraçado a mim, sem eu poder fazer nada. Nicolau Labato, o presidente de Fretilin, was killed by Indonesian troops during this offensive. News of his death came as a great shock to all Timorese people. He had personified the struggle for independence. The Indonesian government took full advantage of Lobato's death, flying his corpse to Jakarta and showing it on Indonesian television. What was not broadcast were the other consequences of the Indonesian operations in East Timor widespread famine and starvation. These smuggled photos were shown in the international press in October 1979. An official of the American Catholic Relief Services estimated that the famine was worse than that in Biafra and as bad as that in Kampuchea. Indonesia, quer dizer, quando Indonesia, coisa já estava lá em Timor, já estava, quer dizer, tanta opressão, quer dizer, o povo não tinha, não podia fazer horta, não podia sair de mais de 50 metros da vila. E, entretanto, começou a haver fome, né? Nós, quer dizer, eu era condutor e eu é que levava, levava a carga. Eu também levava a carga e com muitas caminhonetes. Eram alugadas para a CRS e para a Rede Cross para levar a comida para a montanha. Nós levávamos a comida, levávamos lá, mas, quer dizer, tudo o que levávamos era o que não prestava. Porque tudo de bom que a Indonésia, que a Rede Cross dava, era vendido nas lojas e era, era para eles, para o uso, uso deles. Despite starvation and the enforced resettlement of much of the population, Fretilin, under the command of its new leader, Kerala Shanana, rebuilt its forces in 1980 and 1981. Its strength lay in a secret network which operated in the towns and concentration camps. In April 1981, the Indonesians launched Operation Security. Schools and businesses were closed down, and 50,000 East Timorese men and boys were conscripted. In groups of 12, they were forced to march in front of advancing Indonesian troops. This strategy was known as the Fence of Legs. There might be some isolated uh, accidents or incidents or whatever you call it that this took place. But as a generality, for instance, that there are real uh, efforts as to violate human rights from the Indonesian government or from military from Indonesia or from the civil service, that is not correct. But sometimes there are what you call here in the West, police brutality, this might happen. It happens everywhere. It happens in Sydney, it happens in Melbourne, it happens in New York. But I also acknowledge that this kind of thing also happened in East Timor. But of course, it is not meant. We are not killing people just for the, for the what they call it, because we enjoy it. Kill. We are not just kind of a civilization. Às quatro da manhã, a Fritlin atacou uma aldeia chamada-se Dari, Dari de Ainaro. E aí feriram um sargento indonésio e andaram a tentar capturar as armas, queimaram lá a casa dos indonésios. Né? O comando, né? o comando deles estava a queimar aquilo. 
Estiveram lá eles dois dias, eles não, não avançaram. Entretanto, a Fortina retirou para o mato outra vez e eles foram para lá. E quando foram para lá, então, a população da área que estava ali, aqueles homens vales, aquelas coisas, prenderam aquilo tudo e levaram para Ainaro. Levaram para Ainaro, alguns foram transferidos para o Ataúro, como já havia muitos, muitos prisioneiros no Ataúro, quer dizer, políticos, quer dizer, como políticos, levaram para o Ataúro, também não tinham comer, como eles já devem saber. E muitos eram mortos em Ainaro. Estavam presos, de noite levavam raparigas, as raparigas bonitas, coisas eles provocavam a usavam delas, delas e, e depois já estavam fartos delas, mas de noite levavam no carro quatro, cinco, e iam matar assim, um, dois, a coisa de dois quilómetros, a caminho de, de caça, numa uma parte chamada Builico, e aí levavam aí uma remanceira muito alta, e eles matavam a facada porque não davam tiro ali, a facada e as agalhadas, e aí depois ainda estava o corpo vivo, mandavam daquela remanceira para baixo, hein? aquilo era uma coisa pá, que a gente, incrível, né? Eu, e depois eu, quando andava, eu andava a fazer transporte de material de construção, passava sempre ali, de vez em quando havia pessoas que iam comigo no carro, porque eu sempre levava pessoas de caça ou de atura que iam pedir um boleia, né? Eu passava e eu disse, mas para aí o carro, olha, a Indonésia matou aqui muitas pessoas. Depois eu parei o carro para ver também, né? Curiosidade, fui ver, estava ali um, em cima um grande lago de sangue, um grande lago de sangue, e depois lá embaixo estavam os mortos. E aí, para aquilo eram mortos por cima, um por cima do outro, de várias posições. Aqui foi a coça. We have to pick out one by one the rebels from from where they are, because uh, our feelings we don't feel good if we have to bomb whole cities or villages flat, because innocent people who are getting dead, killed or hurt or wounded or whatsoever. So we have to do it very carefully. Just take out these uh, elements who wants to be to, to be their own. The failure of successive campaigns to crush the resistance forced Indonesia's General Pawanto to hold ceasefire talks with Shanana in a Fretland controlled area in March 1983. When Shanana sought to include Portugal and the United Nations in the negotiations, Indonesia's Commander in Chief, General Madani, broke the ceasefire by announcing another offensive Operation Clean Sweep. As documented by Amnesty International, this offensive was accompanied by a huge increase in the number of people who disappeared. From August to December 1983, a reported 600 people in Dili alone disappeared. Destroyed relatives were told they had been sent to Bali. And we don't need anybody else's advice on looking after our human rights problems. It's a closed book. It's a closed book. You said it as a close look, yes. Tilmang, in three days, think Osanebana, Neneper Nihudi, Belle Moris, Nibel Filafali, say in three days, Osan Lava, in Yella Filona, Isir Susar Bar, Osan Laia, in three days, Ne Osan Lamusuba, Agustin Lacon to Hilor, I'm Latin Paradir. It's a time for silence, for the silence time, for the lifetimes lost, the lives giving, for the homeland. For the nation, for the people, for our liberation. Soon after the Australian Labour Party regained power in 1983, Prime Minister Hawke visited the Indonesian president to foster closer ties. Later, the Hawke government became the only Western nation to give formal or de jure recognition to Indonesia's incorporation of East Timor. During the 1983 ceasefire, an Australian parliamentary delegation had gone to East Timor. The delegation was led by Bill Morrison, a federal Labour minister. The politicians were escorted by the Indonesian military throughout their visit. When the delegation of Bill Morrison went to Timor, antes de eles chegar, a Indonesia começou a mandar as caminhonetes dos chinos, muitos carros, né? Todos, todos as pessoas tinham carros, contratar os carros para ir transportar a população estava com a Indonésia nas montanhas e em todos os lados para virem para vir para fazer a representar né para receberem o, essa delegação do Bill Morrison 
E quando eles chegaram lá, aquilo teve 10, começaram a lançar, começaram a fazer coisas, para mostrar que o povo estava com a Indonésia, né? Queriam fazer, mostrar que o povo estava com a Indonésia. E depois eles até disseram, se, se alguém perguntasse a falar inglês ou sabe falar português, dizer que não sabe falar, que não sabe falar só sabe falar em Indonésia. Já esqueceram o português. Quando as forças, quando as Indon... essa, essa comissão de... foi lá, eles iam ficar num hotel. Eles tinham um hotel, quer dizer, que era o hotel Resende. O hotel Resende era só para, para, os, para os indonésios, para aqueles grandes, né? porque eles não queriam coisa, para quando houvesse, houvesse assim, delegações que iam a Timor, eles tinham, quer dizer, punham lá para ninguém coisa. Entretanto, nesses hotéis, eles tinham lá criados timorenses a trabalhar. Mas nesses dias, eles tiraram, mandavam os crianças ir embora, davam off, né? E punham lá oficiais indonésios vestidos de criados, assim, coisa, que é para ver se alguém ia lá falar com eles ou qualquer coisa, para depois eles, no fim, para iam lá buscar e liquidavam essa pessoa. An official fact-finding committee from Australia will let in to come and have a look into East Timor. In fact, they have no right to do so. But since this is a neighboring country and their intentions are good and we cooperate so they can see for themselves. Near the town of Laga, the delegation was stopped by Fretilin guerrillas who delivered an invitation to Bill Morrison. Um, the, uh, they had uh, Fretilin gear on and markings. They handed me a letter which was signed Fretilin. Um, the Fretilin authorities, uh, the uh, Indonesian authorities, said that the... Morrison did not accept the invitation, which was to meet um, nearby I, with a Fretilin uh, leader, saying it was too late in the day. It was later reported that the Fretland guerrillas were subsequently executed. In April 1985, Bill Morrison was appointed Australia's ambassador to Indonesia. From the first day of the invasion, Fretland maintained radio contact with supporters in Darwin. Despite Australian government attempts to seize the radio, contact was maintained until December 1978, when the Indonesians captured the transceiver in East Timor. This smuggled photo shows Fretilin re-establishing the link in January 1985. On this occasion, Australian politicians, human rights representatives and the media were forced to hide in the bush outside Darwin in order to hear accounts by Fretilin of the ongoing war in East Timor. On the doorstep of Australia, we've seen the massacre of in excess of 100,000 people, potentially 200,000 people. And today I've been able to observe at first hand that the voice of Fretland is still coming from East Timor. And I think it's extremely important that people understand that the struggle isn't over. Forty years before, Australian commandos fighting the Japanese had used similar means to transmit vital information to Darwin. During the Second World War, we support Australian commandos and we lost about 40,000 lives to support Australia. I myself, I lose my father and one brother. Those boys and young men, they came with us voluntarily. They wanted to be with the Australians. Bahamoric Australia soldado. Go with the Australian soldiers. They loved us. We had nothing. We were depending on them for food. Uh, we were on, depending on them to carry our wounded. We were depending on them for everything we did outside of fighting. We depended on the Timorese. Australia was at war. We lost 20,000 men killed, I believe, in World War II. 600,000 people lose up to 60,000 people. And who brought the trouble on them? We brought the trouble on them when we went to Timor. In the first 13 years of the occupation, no one visited East Timor unless they had been invited by the Indonesian authorities. In the face of increasing international pressure from many quarters, including the European and Japanese parliaments and the United States Congress, Indonesia announced that from January 1989, tourism in East Timor would be allowed, that the country would be partially open to the outside world. I'd say, do you speak English? And if I just wanted directions, they were charming. But if I started to say, what's it like living here, they would look very frightened and look both ways and go. First of all, they called in one Timorese. And then they cited me, so I was called in next. 
they got over me pretty quickly. They just took particulars off the passport. But the Timorese, he was questioned. He had to put a, his hand behind his head like that, jump in the air and genuflect on each alternate knee. After he did it about 20 times, he thought, well, this is enough. He stopped and there was a roar. Kate gone. I reckon about 200 times. But with the opening of his tear motor, people started to go into his t into back home and started to, to see what was like back there. Some, it takes two visits before they come back revolted because it is their own relatives telling them, go out there and speak up. Because they in Timor have decided already to, 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 to do whatever they can to go against Indonesians. But if you travel into the areas like I did through the mountains, where a lot of the Timorese people live, the area is swarming with Indonesian soldiers and the whole air, the whole atmosphere of the place is fraught with danger and insecurity. Robert Dom, an Australian lawyer, went to East Timor in September 1990. He was taken by the Timorese underground 20 kilometres into the mountains, where he met and recorded the only ever interview with the commander of the armed forces of the resistance, Kerala Shanana. The interview with Shanana lasted for about 12 hours, so we covered a large number of issues. But I suppose the most important themes to me from what he had to say were firstly the level of the resistance and in particular the situation of students and young people in East Timor today. As crianças de ontem, a quando da invasão, sofreram diretamente os horrores da guerra. Eles viram seus pais massacrados, viram suas mães maltratadas, seus familiares e amigos, muitos deles viveram nas montanhas durante os três primeiros anos. Muitos outros estiveram desde, desde logo sob o controle do inimigo. Em 1988 a 1990, a situação obrigou de que os estudantes tinham de que manifestar publicamente, fazer chegar as suas aspirações à comunidade internacional, como também ao próprio povo de Timor, de que os estudantes, até o momento presente, rejeitam a integração da sua parte no contexto da nação inglesa. Increasingly, the students and the people of East Timor have turned to the Timorese Catholic priests for physical protection as well as moral and spiritual support. The membership of the Catholic Church has risen from 40 to over 80% of the population. However, the Timorese clergy have found little support from the Vatican. In preparing for the Pope's visit to East Timor in October 1989, the Vatican envoy, Father Tucci, said that the Vatican should not sacrifice its interests for the sake of a few hundred thousand Catholics. Many innocent people have died. After each homily, they would all raise their fists and cry out, Viva! The excitement rose with each time, especially when he said, you are the salt of the earth in your great suffering. But when the Pope said that they should reconcile, there was absolute silence. And I couldn't believe it was actually happening. And I started to get those shivers up and down my back. And I realised they're united completely. Sir Loke Pambletu, I was in the restaurant Sir Loke Pambletu. 
sira padre sira leteng dara tia dada papa tama babe sene batroka ne mais <hesitation> en kwandu kwandu si papa lahare ona <hesitation> tropa sin nizi kumesa ba atu kara atu sero na atu kara istiran sene pra <hesitation> hadau atu hadau pamblit sene bo sene ne so it wasn't until i got on a bus and was leaving that an indonesian journalist told me that there'd been this big protest and he told me all about it but what was even better was that when i got back to the hotel i was told of the availability of a tape which had come from the indonesian television station that operates in dili and i was shown it you saw the students run forward carrying these banners as if they were running into the cannons you saw the Plain clothes, um, pious worshippers suddenly pull out truncheons and belt them, and you saw chairs being picked up and young people being belted with the chairs. Today, I said, "Full of physical, you know, full of physical. Go and watch. Today, I thought, 'It's a scene, you know. See, it's a scene that I'm going to do. It's going to hit on a.'" Saya pernah itu berasai. Tempu kiri kiri pernah itu berasai. Itu ni ya, itu ni ya. Hatu itu ni ya karak bawa mundur liur ni. Itu sih dikata dia. Bawa bawa itu ni mata lahan orang. So that the moment you'd seen that, you know that nobody has exaggerated when they've talked about people being murdered, beaten. Because we that there it was for our very eyes over a little thing. By and I said, well, what what's on the banners? Because I don't speak Tetan, and it said Pope save East Timor, Viva Fretland, Viva Shanana. Amelia Guzmao, the wife of Kerala Shanana, and their two children have been separated from him since the invasion in December 1975. Assisted by the International Red Cross in East Timor, they came to Australia in April 1990. Depois fui, a partir de 1980, fui sempre interrogada porque o meu marido já era conhecido, né? E eu me sempre buscar, era sempre à noite. A partir das 9 horas da noite, ia-me sempre buscar e levava sempre comigo os dois filhos. Muitas das vezes estavam doentes, tinha que levar também, sim, doentes. Ficávamos lá das 9 horas, às vezes até uma hora, duas horas e até às 7 da manhã. Faziam perguntas, faziam propostas, que era para eu chamar o meu marido no mato. Criam os meus filhos. E eu dizia, sempre dizia que não, né? Que não ia chamar o meu marido e que nem dava os meus filhos. E eles então insistiam sempre. Como eu não aceitava, começavam a falar assim, palavras. Palavras impróprias para uma mulher, né? E para sair de, de Timor para cá também foi muito difícil. Eles, eles fizeram-me sofrer até a última hora. Isso quer dizer, com interrogações? Sim, com interroga interrogações. E se eu precisasse de algum documento né, para o processo da imigração, era sempre interrogada. Porque eles não queriam que eu saísse de Timor. Uhum. Queriam que eu ficasse lá para até o meu marido uhum. render. Mas a conclusão que não, eu também disse que ele não havia de render. Porque ele quando saiu do meu lado disse logo que render nunca. Ele preferia morrer do que render. Mas ele, a resposta dele era sempre que ele estava a lutar não para a família, mas sim para todo o povo de Timor-Leste. Open your eyes, a new sun is over your village. Open your eyes, a new sun is over our land. Away! Take the reins of your own Kuda. Awake, take command of our own land. Despite beatings and arrests following their demonstration during the Pope's visit, the students prepared themselves for the visit of the United States Ambassador to Indonesia, John Monjo, in January 1990. <laughs> Demonstra, demonstra, para demonstran itu mereka uh, ada yang menunggu di airport dengan sepeda-sepeda motor dengan taktik mereka sudah yang sudah di, di 
eh, di rencanakan itu salah satu satu kelompok ya terus ada kelompok lain ya di mana mereka hanya menunggu menunggu ya, di, di tidak hanya pas di depan hotel turisme tapi agak lebih jauh sedikit untuk hanya mengamati aja nah, itu kedua ada yang ada juga yang sudah di depan hotel turisme itu between 80 and 100 young people students raced into the hotel. We could hear this noise coming down the street and they tore into the hotel and occupied the balcony upstairs where Ambassador Monjo and his party were uh, and also ran into the beer garden and unfurled banners that were all written in English. Well, I took a photograph initially of the students and then the talk started with the Ambassador and the students and I took a series of photographs then. Dan tidak hanya pemuda, tidak hanya anak laki, tetapi justru di, 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 di tengah-tengah itu para demonstran yang kebanyakan laki itu banyak juga yang wanita, yang anak gadis yang di mana mereka sudah kehilangan orang tuanya yang telah di Indonesia bunuh dan segala macam itu. Itu ketidakpuasan mereka itu benar-benar ditunjukkan kepada dan para duta itu memang mereka mendengar keluhan-keluhan itu. And while the ambassador talks to them, truckloads of um, military police, riot police, turned up and surrounded the hotel. Soldiers came into the hotel and surrounded it. And then the ambassador had to leave, and the students asked him if he could grant them safe passage from the hotel. And as he was leaving, the students tried to follow him um, unsuccessfully. He drove off quite quickly. Three truckloads of riot police just moved in and started beating the students, forcing them up against uh, an iron fence that runs along the front of the Turismo. Um, so we saw probably 40 or 50 students um, get the hell beaten out of them with rifle butts, with batons. The, uh, the riot police essentially rioted. The students were unarmed, had uh, indulged in no aggressive behaviour whatsoever. <laughs> memegang eh, apa kepala mereka dan mem, eh, memukul melawan mobil-mobil ya menghantam mereka sampai berdarah they just bashed into the students, left their clothes, their shoes, scattered over the road. There was pools of blood in the middle of the road. Indonesian intelligence officers threw buckets of sand from the beach over the road, over the blood on the road, and the students ran across and, and dipped their hands in the blood and the sand. They were very angry that this was being covered over so quickly. One of the students threw a T-shirt over the fence and it was saturated with blood and he said, take that to your country, tell your country what you've just seen. The newspaper said many were hurt and one was actually could have been killed. Many of us have relatives back in Timor, especially in Dil. Dil is not a big city. And that is the reason why it took us there, because we wanted them to, to, to find out what happened to those three students that were badly hurt. We have been protesting for 14 years and not, not once has it come out on the television. And now you want to cover it up. You are now in Indonesia. Yes. This is Indonesia. You are now technically trespassing. We were waiting for the consulate. It was agreed that they would see us. And we had an appointment, so we would wait and see him. And the police said, oh, no, you can't. You're trespassing. So now we're going to take you by force. He said, oh, look, we are going to stay here. You do whatever you have to do, but we are staying here. About 30 East Timorese students and supporters went to the Indonesian consulate in Sydney today yeah, we, to we present three letters really to be part of I said that uh, on behalf of our community and, and the young Timorese people living in Australia, in Sydney, we want to hand this letter to the general consulate in order for him to deliver to the Indonesian government in Jakarta as our formal protest in regards of the uh, mistreatment of uh, Istimulit uh, students in, in Dili. 
but the Consul General refused to see them and instead called in the police to remove the students from the premises. Our reason being there was just a peaceful demonstration. It was just a symbolic sit-in in regards to the people of East Timor that were just shot during a peace, also a peaceful demonstration. Actually, the police started grabbing people and uh, pushing people and uh, brutally taking people to the car. As a direct consequence of the student demonstration during Ambassador Monjo's visit three weeks earlier, General Benny Madani went to East Timor to address a meeting of senior East Timorese officials. At great personal risk, a secret audio recording was made of his speech. Mark Baker, a journalist for the Australian newspaper The Age, was in Dili one week later and through an anonymous contact was able to obtain a copy of the recording. Porque é necessário que a camada estudantil 